Hi, I'm Mara Webster within Creative Company and thank you for joining us for one of our talks today. Today we're joined by the wonderful Rudy Darmalingham to talk all about his Showtime series Wakefield. And you're playing a character in this series that has so many complexities, so many different layers, and there's so much to unpack episode by episode as we learn more about his backstory, his family life, his childhood. Um, you know, and you're really exploring both the external and the internal with with this character. And so with all of that, I was really interested in, in just your journey and finding what your character's core truth was and the way that you worked with the scripts at the beginning to really kind of navigate and figure out these two different spaces that you're carrying it into throughout the show. Yeah, I mean, I mean, when I when I first got the job, I, you know, well, actually before I got the job, I read the series Bible that um, Kristen and Sam, Sam Meekle, the two showrunners and um, the guys at Jungle, um, the production company um, had sent me. And it was kind of like, it was so detailed. The series Bible was so incredibly detailed and it really painted a picture, the, the, a beautiful sort of picture of, of this fictional world um, that Kristen and Sam had, had created. Um, I say fictional, but I mean, yes, it is fictional, but I think it's it's heavily influenced by Kristen's own um, experience of being in a psychiatric ward herself, which she's been very open about. Um, so I think it perfectly sort of, um, I think the series as a whole sort of perfectly encap encapsulates what life is, is like inside a psych ward. But yeah, in terms of the, how I navigated the complexity, it was, it was very much a process that I went on for six months, actually more than that, because we shot for three months, then we got shut down because of um, COVID, then we had a couple of months off, and then I went back for a few months. So it's probably eight, eight or nine months, really, that I was trying to figure out the trajectory of, of this character. Um, and I had a lot of uh, I had a lot of conversations with with Sam and, and Kristen along the way, I, I needed, I needed to have uh, those uh, those conversations um, almost on a daily basis actually and they were very open to that because it was really hard it was really hard to 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 do it was, I was very passionate about obviously doing justice to their work and in order to do justice to their work I had to go I had to go very deep within the psyche of this character so deep that uh, by the end of it it was hugely emotional. I mean, I remember the final scene, the final scene when we wrapped um, in September, I completely and utterly broke down. And I don't think I've ever sobbed like that, ever. I cried pretty hard when I watched, when I watched Shawshank Redemption. You know, Shawshank Redemption and Rocky IV, when Apollo dies, I always cry. And in Shawshank Redemption, I just cry all the way through it. But I've never sobbed. I just completely, it was just because I'd, I'd had this, I lived this character so deeply uh, for, for nine months in a way that I didn't think I was sort of capable of doing, really. I had to, yeah, I had to sort of... Um, take care of my own mental health as well, because I think when you're dealing with a, a character of that complexity and you're going back through that character's life and journey through life and their childhood, you have to create, you have to create a mental framework. And that's something I always do in any, in any role. But for this particular role, I had to go right down to the root of everything. And I had to, you know, sort of conjure and create memories and images. And I mean, my imagination, I have pretty good imagination and I needed that because I've crea I created this whole world in my mind that, that was very hard to get over at the end of it. At the end of the whole process, I remember coming home and my wife and I, we went to a went away for a couple of nights and I just had to decompartmentalize. I had to just take a breath, take a, take some very deep breaths and just, um, cause I, I was very attached to this character and very attached to his world. Um, and it was quite debilitating at times. So 
yeah, it was pretty deep <laughs> in answer to your question. I don't know even know if that did answer your question, but yeah. It, it did, and it really comes across in, in the performance. And, and one of the interesting things in, in getting more of that information, particularly as it relates to his childhood and the idea of, of trauma and what we carry with us as, as yeah. adults, yeah. Um, I thought it was interesting that as you kind of gain those details, that there's certain things early on that obviously make sense and you really understand in your performance. And so how did you really do a lot of work in looking to the later episodes, looking to that information in the show Bible yeah. and the details that, that Kristen and yeah. Sam were able to give you, and yeah. then finding how you really wanted to encompass that in your performance early on, even before we as an audience have learned about this information with him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I, I um, in terms of the trauma aspect, I experienced some trauma as a child myself. And I think most people have experienced some level of trauma, whether they've lost a friend or a, a loved one or, or a, a dog or, or a pet or whatever. Um, but I experienced some trauma as a child and I was able to use that. I was that that was another thing as well that was quite debilitating because all of that was coming back up again. Um, and uh, which was great. I mean, it was fantastic for the character. It was really, really amazing. And I mean, another thing that really helped me was the quarantine. So I was in quarantine when I went back to Australia um, for the second leg, if you like. Uh, I had to quarantine for two weeks in a, um, a government assigned hotel. Um, and it was really, it was tough. It was, it was really, you ask anyone that's done two weeks of quarantine, not five days, but anyone that's done two weeks of quarantine, it's really, really um, uh, discombobulating. Um, so I was on my own in a hotel. Um, someone would bring me some food. I mean, the food was pretty basic, but that was fine. Um, I had a, an army uh, uh, sort of personnel that was always sat at the end of the corridor um, just to make sure none of us decided to do a runner. Um, we had no windows. A lot of modern hotels have no opening windows, so I couldn't even have any fresh air. Just had the air conditioning whirring for two weeks. Um, and like, for instance, there's little things as well. Like I couldn't even see it. I didn't see a tree for two weeks. I'd look out of my window and all I could see was buildings, <laughs> concrete. Um, so I was very much alone with my thoughts in that environment. And it was great because it was, it enabled me to uh, go so deep within the character um, because it was approaching a time, a point in the series where Nick was becoming more and more isolated and more and more solitary and more desolate and more lost. And I was pretty lost in that environment. <laughs> um, so it was in, in hindsight, it was kind of a, a blessing really because it enabled me to um, tap into um, uh, uh, the, the sort of trauma that he experienced. And, 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 I, and I kind of lived that for the next six or seven weeks. Yeah. And you know, with that idea as well, there's something that Kristen's mentioned in terms of talking about the show and that it was very important to her that it, you know, it acknowledged the the gravity and the seriousness of elements within the story, but without feeling too consistently bleak and too dark tonally. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, still having some comedy and some lightness without making light of the situation at any point, which I think is a really difficult balance to strike in the center. And given that that's something that was so important to her in the telling of this story and how she approached it, was that something that the two of you discussed and, and did it influence the way that you thought about your performance at all in any way I don't think it influenced my performance because I just I, I I always work on my instinct so if if <laughs> and I always work with the text so I don't I, I I was never in a situation where I thought oh let's this is a funny scene or let's make this funny it was you know it was like if it was written in the in the script then naturally the humor would come out anyway but I think Kristen was very passionate about you know making sure that it wasn't too bleak and too dark that at the end of it there was hope and i think the overriding theme throughout the whole show is hope because anyone that is that has um, suffered with mental illness and let's face it i would say most people have whether it be depression anxiety um irrational fears i don't know uh, addiction whatever we all walk that line of sanity every day every single one of us and we can fall off that platform 
of sanity so very easily. It's disrupted so very and can happen to anyone at any time. And it happened to her. Um, and she, in hindsight, she 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 finds it. She found it. She found her experience obviously traumatic, but at the same time, you ha- she said, you know, you have to laugh. You have to see the, the the funny side of it. And I suppose she has license to do that because she's been in the psych ward herself. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the the comedy is something that you know is, I think, inherently derived from just what is what makes us human beings, you know, and um, what what we uh, what we are as individuals, life is amusing, life is heartbreaking, life is, life is traumatic, life is difficult. It's, we're constantly playing, you know, you, you know, trying to, you know, I suppose, I suppose we're always constantly trying to uh, see the funny side of things as well, no matter how dark our lives get. And and with your character, obviously, a central part of, of who he is in the way that we meet him is that he is someone who just has a, a very wonderful and sensitive tact with patients and really yeah. is able to strike up a very unique and individual rapport with each person based on reading them and figuring out what he, what they need from him. And it is something where he goes above and beyond in a lot of ways, but it's still within the confines of professionalism. Yeah. And was that something where you had to really cognizantly think about, you know, what that line of professionalism would be and make sure that he didn't step over it at any point? Or was that just very naturally from, from what was in the scripts because it really comes across in, in a lot of the dialogue and the interactions in that way as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's, you know, Nick is, um, he's a bit of a maverick, you know, he's unorthodox, he's an anti-bureaucrat, he's anti-establishment, he's innovative, he's experimental, he's intuitive, he he has no rule book. And um, that sort of ruffles a, a few feathers within Wakefield, but he always gets results. And he's the, you know, if in moments of crisis within Wakefield, you know, where's Nick? We need Nick because Nick will know how to defuse this situation. Um, And he, yeah, I mean, that was a challenge as well, you know, for for myself as as Rudy, because he's, Nick is very much, um, he's very at ease with people and with anyone. He has this just wonderful quality of warmth uh, and he's very giving as well, and 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 you know, and, and it's um, it's trying to create a character that has so many of those incredible qualities. This almost like spiritual figure, almost. It's quite, yeah, quite difficult. But you know, as I said, you know, I always work from the script. I always go with my instincts, and um, and I think I think that we created a. I think together, it wasn't just me, but it was Sam and Kristen and Jocelyn Morehouse and Kim Morden, all of us created that character. It wasn't just down to me. I just embodied it, but they, we all created it. Yeah. And as we get to see a little bit more about the internalization of him as a character, the types of things that he's seeing within his mind, um, you know, there's, there's very different scopes to that. There's a lot of the childhood flashbacks. There's the obvious, obvious significance of the song Come on Eileen that he keeps seeing in different iterations and different motions with different characters at different spaces as well. Um, And one of the things that I appreciate in your performance is that you're never playing to like the overly dramatic experience for your character of what it's like to wake up in the middle of the night or to be, you know, imagining a scene like that at a train platform. And was it really important to you to be playing to the microcosm of the emotional impact rather than the overly dramatic of it? Yeah, I mean, my I mean, I spent 15 years doing theatre. My background is in theatre and I, you know, I, 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 I've performed in, you know, some so many plays in quite a few venues and incredible places. You know, I've, I've had, you know, a wonderful experience doing that. Uh, but there came a point about five, four or five years ago where I decided that I, I wanted to I wanted to uh, move my enthusiasm for truth. Uh, and creating truth into another medium. And I wanted to, I wanted to sort of do more screen work. And, and that's, that's because, and it was a very different format for me. And that's purely because I, I think I always struggled with being utterly as truthful as I could be in an environment where I'm having to play to 2000 people. 
And that's an incredible skill uh, for someone that can do it. And I want, I, I, I always found sort of the intimacy of truth very hard to um, establish in a theatre. Some people can do it and that's amazing. And I, I, I could do it, but uh, not as well as I, I'm able to do it on screen. And I suppose working in TV and film, I'm able to be utterly truthful uh, with another individual on a really, really, really small level, um, which is um, which is thrilling because that for me is what my job is all about. You know, not playing out to an audience. Um, I just want to create, you know, real sort of artistic truth and be um, be as authentic as I can possibly be. That I find really stimulating and that you know I got that from my childhood when I was I read an actor prepares which is a Stanislavski uh, kind of actor's bible and I read that in a couple of days and it just and, and I, I always approach everything using that methodology now so yeah there's also a lot of interesting ways in which you get to explore your character in terms of movement because there's there's the moments where we we see him kind of visualizing himself tap dancing which clearly was a big part of the storyline with his childhood trauma as well that he's carrying um, and there's different explorations and emotions that come across through the tap dancing which I know was not a skill that you went into this show with and actually trained specifically for and then it's interesting to look at scenes like that in juxtaposition to his movement with the patients the way that he sits with them the way that he interacts with them and so was it really did it really open up a lot of different spaces and ways that you could explore the character where you're playing someone where you get that day-to-day -day, that body language that intimacy of what that means his interpersonal relationships and then you also get the visual fantasy of tap dancing sequences to explore in a completely different realm as well yeah yeah well I think that's um I think that whole notion what you're talking about the idea of kind of being one person during the day and then another person when you're alone at night is something that we all do anyway in our regular lives. Like we go to work, um, we have our work persona, which we commit to and we are passionate about and we enjoy hopefully. And then we go home and we're sort of, you know, yes, you might have, you, you know, it might be around family and children, husbands, wives, mums, dads, brothers, sisters, whatever. But there's always a time when you're in when you're in bed at night when you're on your own with your own thoughts and i think i found that contrast between his work life um, and his ability to continue to have such a profound effect on on his patients uh, whilst also having this sort of concoction of of um of sort of uh, bad memories and trauma sort of percolating and getting stronger and stronger in his visions and his flashbacks and these shards of memory just becoming more and more overbearing and and you know by episode eight it's just a pressure cooker and everything is released so um uh, yeah it was it was uh, and I, I worked you know from an actor's point of view I had to work that as I went like I think I read episode one and two and then Someone said to me, oh, episode three's out. Do you, have you read it? No, I'm just focusing on episodes one and two at the moment. I can't get my headspace there yet. Or in episode four, when episode eight came out, I was just, no, I just need to focus on this first and then I'll, I'll figure that out later. Yeah. And when it does come to those interpersonal relationship dynamics that he has with each of the patients and, and with what we were talking about before, where each of them is is very unique and he's got that real sense of intuitiveness, um, you know, and he's really reading people and sitting there listening and responding. Did that play into the way that you were working with a lot of the cast as scene partners in really just being in a position of sitting there and listening and absorbing their performance to really then figure out energy wise what you needed to give back in the scene in the moment? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I also work very spontaneously. Um, I don't plan anything. Um, I even sort of, I used to actually learn the lines, you know, sort of, as soon as I get a script, you know, regardless of when we're shooting the scene, I'll be learning the lines, learning the lines, learning the lines. And this job, actually, I completely changed my methodology. And I just, I actually just, um, I took it very much on a day by day basis. At the end of the day, I'd get the, the call sheet for the, for the, for the following day and I'll be okay we're doing that scene and that scene and that scene okay I'll I'll figure that out I'll figure that out when I get home and I'll figure it out on set um 
And I wouldn't look at the advanced schedule because there's no point. There's no point in consuming my mind with something that's happening, you know, two days and two days ahead from where we where we are now. There's no point because I'm not there yet. And let's get tomorrow out of the way first. Let's concentrate. Let's focus all, you know, let's focus my mind on the six or seven. I mean, yeah, because I was admittedly doing about six or seven scenes every single day. Um, I had one day off um, very early on. Uh, actually, no, I. Yes, I had one day off in the in the first week. And uh, after that, it was, yeah, it was six or seven scenes every single day. And so because the workload was so huge, I, I can't plan. I can't um, I can't plan for that. I have to I have to very much feel it in the moment. And like you say, I have to feel it with, you know, what the other actors are doing at the same time as well. You know, you're giving me that. OK, well, there's no you know, I have to work with that. We have you know, this it's a collaboration. There's no point in me just learning my lines saying okay I'm going to do it like this because actually the other actor is not has to be involved in that conversation as well so we have a conversation we rehearse it and then we just work very organically and even within that spontaneity was there a difference to the intrinsicness in in the way that you just really felt out scenes in the moment once you were shooting towards the end of the season from when you started because obviously there is that thing that obviously you know the longer you connect with a character the more you inhabit them and particularly with a character like this with everything you were saying at the beginning about the psyche yeah. and really unpacking that there's such an opportunity to have explored so much of that by the time you get to shooting the later episodes yeah i mean i <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I was so um, at ease with the character um, come, you know, the, 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 you know, the final sort of few episodes. Um, and I, I sort of, um, yeah, look, I mean, basically, I, I very much, everything within Nick's life was in me. Uh, and every day was emotional because I was living it. I had very, I had a few moments where I just kind of broke down. I remember speaking to the costume designer uh, and she just looked at me and she said, are, are you all right? Uh, and I just, I just started crying. I said, not really, <laughs> but it's a good thing. I'm, I'm, I'm not okay, but it's a good thing because it, it's the, the character is, is just sort of seeping into every part of me um, really quite hard to navigate that and it's quite hard to sort of step back from that uh, and I didn't want to step back from that and I remember Sam saying to me how did you what did you do at the weekend you know uh what did you get up to did you, are you watching anything you know are you watching anything interesting on Netflix or or you know anything like that I said Sam I don't have time to watch anything I'm just reading my scripts I'm just doing my own work and doing my homework. Um, you know, I don't want to switch off. I didn't want to switch off at any moment because I had to maintain, I had to maintain that feeling and I had to maintain all those images in order to do justice to that script. And, and that's what I was absolutely passionate about doing. So I went to, I went to a pretty extreme place. <laughs> And, and given the fact that, you know, there, there were the challenges of the character on the surface already, everything that you were talking about with the break with COVID and, and a lot of the spaces that you had to carry him to, um, and even what you were talking about with like finding that different space of intimacy with him, what are the biggest learnings and takeaways that you feel like you've walked away from this project with? Well, I've, I've learned how to do an Australian accent. Uh, so yeah, that was really hard to start with. That was so hard. Uh, but um, I just listened to the radio when I was in my hotel room like all the time because I just wanted to be, I just wanted to be exposed to the accent. I didn't want to hear any other accent. Um, so yeah, I learned the Australian accent. I learned how to tap dance, which was a bit of a miracle because when I was at university, I, well, I, I wasn't a dancer. I've never danced professionally before. I mean, I can't, a friend of mine said to me once, Rudy, you're such a, an assured actor, but when it comes to counting a rhythm, when it comes to counting a beat, you ha you're utterly hopeless. I said, yeah, yeah, I can't, I just can't, it's just not something that comes naturally to me. And um, I had to really work at the, the, uh, the tap dancing, but I, you know, I practiced for hours every day in my hotel room, much to the uh, annoyance of the people below me. Um, constantly hearing this sort of like 
on the on on the floor. Um, so um, I learned how to tango as well, which was I had to do a tango. I had to learn how to, t- yeah. And um, but in terms of something, uh, I suppose, in terms of something, what I learned about myself, I learned that actually there's no ceiling on what you can achieve. You know, we set ourselves goals and we set ourselves sort of, you know, sort of, uh, we have ambitions in life and I'm very ambitious, but I think it's very easy for people to say, I want to get here or I want to get there. But actually that scope of what you can achieve as an artist or whatever you do for a living, it's kind of infinite. It, you know, there is no ceiling on what you can achieve. And, I, you know, when I embarked on that journey back in January 2020, um, I, I had no idea that I would be able to create a character that was so, so tangible and so vivid. So, um, yeah. <laughs> well, I feel like the, the dedication to, to building this character and also the intimacy that you have with him as a character really comes across in your performance. So congratulations on a really wonderful series. Thank you so much, Rudy. Thank you. Thanks very much for having me.